boys and girls, it's Miss Jenny. Oh, guys, I've missed you so much these past few weeks, so I decided I'd stop by and do a little story time with you today. All right? Okay, let's get started. Let's start with a song, and you guys sing along with me, okay? All right, here we go. We're going to sing Hello, Everybody. Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hello, everybody. How are you? How are you today? Hello, everybody. Pat your heads. Pat your heads. Pat your heads. Hello, everybody. Pat your heads. Pat your head today. Hello, everybody. Tap your shoulders. Tap your shoulders. Tap your shoulders. Hello, everybody. Tap your shoulders. Tap your shoulders with me. Hello, everybody. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Hello, everybody. Clap your hands. Clap your hands with me. Hello, everybody. Touch your feet. Touch your feet. Touch your feet. Hello, everybody. Touch your feet. Have a seat with me. Okay, guys, you know, usually I read stories to you in story time, but you know what? I didn't bring any of my books home from the library to read to you. So today I'm going to tell you a story. This is a folk tale, which means it's a story that was told a long time ago across generations. It might be a story that your great-grandparents heard, or your grandparents heard, or your parents heard. Well, today I'm going to tell it to you, and as stories change along the years, this is kind of Miss Jenny's version of story. So let's get started. This is a story about a little boy, and his name is E. Paminondas. Oh my goodness, that's a long name, isn't it? Can you say it with me? E. Paminondas. That's right. Super long name. Well, E. Paminondas used to like to go and visit his grandparents. And E. Paminondas was so lucky. Do you know why? Because his grandparents just lived down the street from him. Well, this particular day when he went to see his grandparents, he bursts in the front door and he smells some something delicious baking in the house. He knows what it is. It's his favorite. Can you guess what it might be? Chocolate chip cookies. Do you guys like chocolate chip cookies? <sighs> Me too. Well, anyway, he goes in and he says, Hi, Grandma. Hi, Grandpa. <gasps> You're making chocolate chip cookies today. Can I have one? And his grandma said, E. Paminondas, even better than that, I made these chocolate chip cookies for you and your mom and dad so you can take them home. <gasps> oh, E. Paminondas was so excited. He took those chocolate chip cookies that his grandma gave him and he didn't want to lose any of them. So he put them in his hands. He put them in his fists and walked along home with his chocolate chip cookies. Well, by the time he got home, those chocolate chip cookies weren't cookies anymore. They were crumbs. He goes to his mom and says, Mom, look! Grandma sent home chocolate chip cookies for me and you. His mom looks at the cookies. She looks at Epam and Anonymous. She says, Epam and Anonymous, don't you know the way to bring cookies home? Take those cookies, put them in your hat, and walk along home. You see, E. Pam and Honest always wear a baseball hat. Well, E. Pam and Honest told them, I remember that, Mom. Well, a few days went by. E. Pam and Honest went to visit his grandma and grandpa again. <gasps> now, every time he went to visit grandma and grandpa, they would always do something fun with him. Well, today, grandma was making butter. She said, E. Pam and Honest, want to help you make butter today? Yeah, Grandma, let's. So Grandma gets out all the ingredients to make butter. She gets out some heavy cream and pours it in a jar. She gets out a little salt and sprinkles it on E. Pam and Anis's cream. And then she puts the lid on very tightly and she tells E. Pam and Anis, okay, E. Pam and Anis, shake your jar. So he shakes it and shakes it and shakes it and shakes it. And pretty soon he has butter. Grandma says, oh, E. Paminanus, great job. I think you're done. Tell you what, I'm going to take your butter out of the jar and I'm going to pour it in a nice bowl. 
brown ball and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator so it gets very cold for you and you can take it on home, okay? Oh, Grandma, that would be great. So you can, but you know what? I wanna go down the stream with Grandpa because he's fishing today and I love to fish with Grandpa, Grandma. She says, perfect, that'll give the butter time to get cold. And Pam Minotis goes down the stream. Pete goes fishing with his Grandpa. Didn't catch any fish though. Grandpa said, you know me, Pam Minotis, it's okay. You can't catch a fish every day. But you know what? I bet that butter's cold that Grandma made with you. Let's go back on up to the house. So they went up to the house. Sure enough, Grandma was getting that butter out of the fridge. Oh, she made it into a nice round ball as round as the moon. Oh, it was as yellow as the sun and as smooth as silk. And Pam and Andis was taking the butter home and he remembered what his mom said the day before. He took that butter, he put it in his hat, put his hat on his head, and he walked on home. Boy, did y'all get into problems. It was a beautiful, sunny, hot day outside. What do you think happened to that butter in his hat? Any ideas? <gasps> it started to melt! It melted down his face, down his eyes, down his nose, down his mouth, down his chin, down his neck, and all the way down to his toes. Well, by the time he got home, and he ran in the house, and he said to his mom, Mom, look as he took off his cap. Grandma and I made fresh butter. Won't it be great to eat on our toast tomorrow morning for breakfast? What do you think? Pam and Honest, you have more butter on you than in your hat. Don't you know the way to bring butter home is to go down to the creek and you're gonna cool it in the water and cool it in the water and cool it in the water and bring it on home. Can you remember any Pam and Honest? I'll remember, Mom. Well, a few days had gone by. And E. Pam and Honest, his mom got a phone call from his grandpa. It was his grandpa this time. His grandpa told his mom, Oh, you might want to send E. Pam and Honest on over. Daisy may have her puppies, and they're ready to go. So send them on down. So as soon as mom got off the phone, she goes, E. Pam and Honest, guess what? Daisy May had her puppies. Grandpa just called and said we should go on down there and feed them. So, E. Pam and Honest, in his excitement, got his hat, put his hat on his head, ran down to Grandma and Grandpa's house. Oh, and as he walked in the door, he saw Daisy May with all her puppies. Oh, they were so cute and cuddly and frisky and jumpy and licky and waggy. Oh. He had so much fun with those puppies. And Grandma and Grandpa said, E. Pam and Honest, your mom said you could have one of these puppies. Would you like to pick one and take one home for you to take care of and love? <gasps> e. Pam and Honest was so excited. He picked the friskiest, the jumpiest, the wiggliest, the cuddliest puppy of the batch. And he took that puppy out home. Now he remembered what his mama said. Dad. Go downstream and you cool them in the water and you cool them in the water and you cool them in the water and you bring them on home. Well, by the time she, he brought his little puppy home, that puppy wasn't so frisky and wiggly. It was a cold, shivery puppy. As he walked in the door, his mama said, E. Pam and Honest, what do you have? Oh, mommy. Look at the puppy Grandma and Grandpa gave me. He's frisky, he's wiggly. Oh, Mommy, he's all what? Oh, he's cold, he's shivery. Mom went and got a towel and wrapped up the puppy and got him all warm. And as she did that, she said, Eat Pam and Honest. Don't you know how you bring a puppy home? You get a piece of rope, you tie it gently around his neck, you take the other end, and you lead your puppy on home. Can you remember that, E. Pam and Honest? I'll remember, Mom. Well, a few days had gone by and E. Pam and Honest was having so much fun with his puppies and learning how to take them for walks and playing with them and teaching them how to go to the bathroom outside. When all of a sudden he decided, hmm, I haven't seen my grandma and grandpa in a while. I'm gonna go visit them. 
and thank them for my puppy and tell him them all about him. So he goes to his grandma and grandpa's house and as he's walking up the fence at the house, he smells this wonderful aroma. <gasps> he knew what that aroma was. It was bread. It must be bread making day. He went in and he said, Grandma, are you making fresh bread today? And Grandma said, be him and honest. I sure am. Grandma, can I take a loaf home? Well, of course you can, E. Pam and Honest. So E. Pam and Honest remembered what his mama said. So he took the rope, piece of rope, took it out of his back pocket, took that rope, tied it around the bread, took the other end of the rope, and he led the bread on home. He pulled it down the sidewalk. He pulled it through the mud puddle at the end of Mrs. Jones' driveway. He pulled it through his front yard. He pulled it through the fresh mulch that his dad had just put down around all the bushes and into the house. So as he went in the house, his mama looked at Epaminondas. She looked at the bread. She looked at Epaminondas. She said, Epaminondas, you don't have the sense you were born with, but that's okay. Epaminondas got to tell you something. I need to go next door to Mrs. Jones's house and borrow a couple flowers. And while I'm over there, I want you to be careful I just baked six cherry pies for the church bake sale, and I put them out on the back porch to cool. So when you go out to play, I want you to be careful how you step in those pots. Do you remember that, E. Pam and Honest? Oh, Mommy, I remember. I'll remember. So it didn't take long. Of course, E. Pam and Honest went to go outside and play with his puppy, and he remembered what his mama said. He went outside. And as he went outside, he stepped right in the middle of every cherry pie. It wasn't two seconds later, his mom comes home and she looks at the pies. She looks at E. Pam and Honest's feet. She looks at her pies and she says, Oh, E. Pam and Honest, you don't have the sense you were born with. And you never will have the sense you were born with. But E. Pam and Honest, can you remember one thing? Just please remember this one thing. E. Pam and I said, yes, ma'am. What's that? Oh, E. Pam and I, I love you just the same. Don't ever forget that. And that's the story of E. Pam and I. That was a silly story, wasn't it? Hey, speaking of that, you've been singing a long time. That was a long story. You know, we do a lot of Jim Gill songs in story time. And Jim Gill was so nice. Do you know what he said? that he said that we could do one of his songs for you guys at home. So let's stand up and do this song, okay? We're gonna do my ups and downs with Jim Gill. You ready? Ready? Okay, here we go. We're gonna stretch our arms up. Are you raising your arms up? Are they up? Your body straight? Okay, we're gonna go down. Are you on the floor? On the floor. Oh my gosh, here we go. We're going to go up again. We're going up, 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 up. Are you on your tiptoes? Are you real high? Are you touching sky? I'm sinking. Uh oh. Are you on your kneecaps? Are you collapsed on the floor? Let's up, up, up. Can you stretch like elastic? Here we go, we're going down. Good job, boys and girls. Are you on the ground? Hey, I had fun with you today. But you know what? It's that time. It's time to do our wave goodbye. Wave high! Wave low. Wiggle your fingers, wiggle your nose, give a kiss, and wave goodbye. Bye, boys and girls. I'll see you next time. Have a wonderful day.